really interesting fight at 170 pounds. We have a guy, and it's been a while since we've seen Brahma, and I'm not talking about The Rock. I'm talking about Alan Joban taking on the Night Train, and Jason Aldean would be proud. Jared Gooden, in Gooden's UFC debut, Matt, we were really looking forward to Jared Gooden's possible UFC debut this past summer, taking on a really tough out in Dwight Grant former common opponent of Alan Joban. Unfortunately, Jared Gooden out of that fight this summer due to injury. So, takes a little bit of time off. And now he's taking on Alan Joban, a guy that we've seen on the desk recently with Karen Bryant and Michael Chiesa for the UFC. A guy who co-hosts on the MMA Heat podcast with Karen Bryant, Alan Joban. And again, like I said, it's been a while since we've seen Joban. About a year and a half to be specific. He lost a split decision to Dwight Grant. And I mean, really, Matt, we look at his last five fights. We go all the way back to the Mike Perry fight. That was almost four years ago. So he fought Perry, beats him by decision. Loses to Gunnar Nelson by submission. Loses to Nico Price by knockout. Beats Ben Saunders by knockout, which, I mean, a strong gust of wind would knock out uh, kill a B on an, any given Sunday. But Matt, Alan Joban, a guy that has 23 pro fights going back to his debut in 2011, versus Jared Gooden, who made his pro debut back in 2015, who has 21 pro fights, Gooden, obviously, the more, um, you know, active guy as of late. We've seen him take on a decent level of competition on the regional scene. Some names might pop up that you recognize. I know Bruno Oliveira was his last loss, a guy that we saw lose to uh, Alberg recently on Contender Series. For Alan Joban, though, I mean, coming up through that RFA schedule into the UFC in 2014, he's definitely taken on some big names that you might recognize. Um, and we had mentioned a few there in the last five. With Alan Joban... Usually when he fights, there's two Alan Jobans you're going to get. And for Jared Gooden, there's only one speed. And I hate to make a Charlie uh, Sheen quote, but go. And the guy just knows exactly what to do. He uses length quite well. He can mix in a lot of good combinations when he keeps it standing. Throws a nice uh, calf kick. And the other thing that Gooden does, throws a lot of straight punches down the pipe. He's not one of those guys that's going for the kill right off the initial uh, shot. And he's not one of those guys that's going to run in and throw looping hooks and leave his head exposed. He throws some nice uppercuts too. But the trouble is, he will keep his head up. And he will keep it right in plain sight. So I said that. He throws a lot of nice because straight shots. Because he throws shots. big hooks though. And that's the problem with Jared Gooden. He has a lot of power, but he knows he has a lot of power. And when a fighter knows that they can just end the fight with one shot, one of the worst things that can happen. Because Jared Gooden, if you watch a lot of his fights, he loads up on his shots. And when he does do that, it gets him in trouble. Because when he is throwing the big uppercut, when he's throwing the big left hook, it leaves his chin wide open. Now, it hasn't cost him all that much as of late. But when you fight a guy like Alan Joban, yes... He's at, we'll say, I won't say he's chipping onto the 18th hole, but he's definitely like pulling his cart between the 16th and 17th, I'd say. He's near the end of his we're, career. We're, but, we're taking drink orders with the drink cart going by. 100%. No, no, no. He's still in the game. Let's not get things twisted. Alan Joban is still a very good fighter, but... Jared Gooden has a lot of holes in his game that a guy like Alan Joban, a wily veteran, can really take advantage of. Now, if Jared Gooden had this skill set, but we saw what a 31-year-old Jared Gooden looks like against a 38-year-old Alan Joban, then maybe by the time he does get a little bit more experience against higher-level competition, it could flesh out that skill set more. But the fact that he is sort of hittable, and with a guy like Joban, no, he doesn't have thunderous power by any means. But if you're throwing those big looping shots as you're moving in, Alan Joban can crack you with a single L. Elbow. Now, Alan Joban, he overuses his elbows a little bit. He's fallen in love with them to a certain degree where even when he goes for the finish, the Ben Saunders fight is a good example, knocks him up with a punch, which he probably could have landed minutes earlier, but it's just every time he would get Saunders hurt, he'd get him up against the cage and, oh, I gotta throw those big elbows, gotta throw those big elbows. Now, when they land, they're phenomenal. We saw... Again, as early as last night, Paul Felder was landing really good elbows in RDA, was able to cut him up a little bit with them, but Alan Joban isn't going to beat those upper, upper level guys at this point in his career. There was a time after he beat Mike Perry, I think he was even ranked for like a week. It was one of those like, oh, he's 15. And then you check the next day and he's not before he fought Gunnar Nelson and Gunnar Nelson, especially back then, if you lose to him, there's no shame in that. So Joe Ben at this stage in his career, I like him as one of those gatekeepers to the UFC. He's in sort of my Matt Brown category. He's in the Tim Means category. He's that well, we know what we're going to get from him. Let's just see what this prospect can do. And if they beat him, it's a great litmus test. And it is a bit of a lose-lose, though, for Jared Gooden. Because let's say he does lose to Alan Joban. Then, okay, you lost. But if you beat him, it's... Well, you beat a guy coming off a year-and-a-half layoff. Like, there's not a lot of shine in this for Jared Gooden. And that's what makes this a very dangerous fight for him. Because stylistically, could he catch Alan Joban? Yes, he could. Nico Price is able to do it. And Alan Joban does kind of have this sort of... 
I'll say lethargic start to some of his fights where he does like to read his opponent. We saw that in the Dwight Grant fight. He lost by split decision, but no one was the real winner of that fight. I know the fans definitely weren't because it was two guys who knew how good their opponent was and they didn't really want to open themselves up for anything. And it just turned into two guys staring at each other. And I mean, you might not be high on Dwight Gooden, or sorry, Dwight Grant at home. Watch his fight against Carlo Petersoli. That guy has hammers for hands. Dynamite. Dwight Grant, you'd never think it. But I mean, yeah, you're right. With Alan Joban, it's almost a picture of consistency unless he decides, hey, Let's stand in a mirror and watch each other fight for a little bit. And that's what we got in that fight against Dwight Grant. For Jared Gooden, you typically get the same thing. A lot of forward pressure, a lot of leg kicks, and he will leave himself open to get hit. I mean, if you go back and watch his very last fight at Titan FC 62, he took on no, not perennial, is he a player owner coach, Josh McCown. He took on Trent McCown. And Matt, that fight was fun, but it also sucked. It did, and it's a little concerning when McCowan can land those clean shots on a guy like Jared Gooden. Over and over and over. Yeah, and he did have him hurt on multiple times, and nothing against McCowan, but he's not the level of striker Alan Joban is. Now, Joban's chin is a little bit questionable, so maybe if Jared Gooden can crack him with a big shot, he can hurt him early. But it's really hard to side with a fighter when their best path to victory is they got to jump on their opponent quick and knock them out. If this fight starts to go long, I don't, I'm not really in love with the cardio of Jared Gooden. I know Alan Joban, even in those fights where he does have sort of an elevated output, can stay very consistent throughout 15 rounds. Cardio has never been an issue. 15 rounds. Or sorry, for 15 minutes throughout three rounds. I like how he checks leg kicks too. I do think that's an important thing that not enough high level fighters do. Even there's champions out there who don't check leg kicks. Piotr Jan doesn't check leg kicks. He's still very good. Habib didn't need to in his last fight yeah uh, so not all fighters do but you always see paul felder's a good example uh where when you are really good at muay thai and that's kind of your main martial art checking leg kicks one of alan joban's kind of not signature moves if you will but just something that he's always done very well throughout his career love the muay thai alan joban i think this will be a very fun fight but it's just really hard to pick against joban when you look at them skill for skill alan joban is definitely the more skilled out of these two to me this is one i'm going to stay away from regardless i mean okay. i look at the odds here alan joban open a minus 145 early money came in and this was about last week on jared gooden so joban went from minus 145 to minus 107 He's now at a minus 133. If you look at Jared Gooden, open a plus 125, got up to a minus 150 or 117. Now he's at a plus 108. So those odds are close. But again, I look at the topology picks. It's early, 456 total votes, 57% going Gooden, 66% saying he's going to win by knockout. For the 43% going Joe Band, 72% saying he's going to get the win by decision. And again, this is a really difficult it one. Is. You look at Jared Gooden, since he lost to Oliveira on a nice three fight win streak. You look at his overall body of work too. And I mean, we can talk about those three fights. Second round knockout, first round rear naked, second round uh, rear guillotine. Before that, he beats Will Santiago that fought on contender series against Kevin Holland. Didn't go all that well. Uh, finished him. Losses to Julian Williams, Dave Vitke, Bruno Oliveira, and Mike Graves. I mean, Matt, overall, a really nice body of work. Plenty of finishes out of the overall uh what 21 22 pro wins seven by knockout seven by submission he can definitely get it done in a lot of different ways and you're right this is a tricky first fight to have it's not like he's fighting another prospect like we have in a couple of our fights here with kose taking on platnikov you're taking on a vet that a lot of people know he's already got that desk gig in alan joban so is this the fight that for 38 year old joban the ufc is like hey i'm throwing you a bone you got to get a win here. That's probably it for Joe Ban. He's been off for a year and a half. 100%. Or is this a fight where Jared Gooden goes in and goes, man, I have something to prove. This guy's on the desk. I got to get a finish over him. Well, I gave away my answer about three minutes ago. I, Alan Joe Ban's going to win this. I, <laughs> yes, Jared Gooden can catch him, but it's always really hard to side with a fighter who their chance is, oh, they can catch them. If this stays at range, Alan Joe Ban can check the light kicks of Jared Gooden defensively and with his footwork, he should be able to stay away from the looping shots. And if he does decide that when Jared Gooden closes distance, if he wants to crash that space and meet him halfway with an elbow, I think he's more than capable of it. I see this being sort of a long, drawn out fight. I doubt either guy gets finished early. I think it'll be an entertaining fight, but I don't see the gas tick of Gooden and staying up with the gas tank of Joban. I do think that as the fight progresses, the technique and the cardio of Joban will prevail. It's tough to say that, Matt. It really is with a guy that's eight years old or hasn't fought in a year and a half. It's a really, it's, it's an unknown commodity that you're getting with Alan Joban. Now, hopefully he's like fight ready, commentary ready Paul Felder and he's coming out here shot out of a can and maybe he was getting ready for a triathlon. Everyone should. Overall, I slightly do edge Alan Joban for the reasons that you brought up. Again, if it goes into the clinch, 
I saw a couple of things with Gooden that I didn't necessarily like when McCowan was able to close distance in his last fight. And I mean, again, Jared Gooden has been quite active. We talked about those fights. You look at his last three. The fight against Stamps a year and a month ago. The fight against Jay Jackson eight months ago. Not a great record at 3-13. and 13. The fight against McCown was only three months ago as well. So he has been very active. Level of competition hasn't quite been there. And again, for Jared Gooden, if he gets a win here, man, kudos to you. Oh, yeah. You're really putting a Marcel Stamps on your UFC debut. But overall, I do slightly edge Alan Joban. To me, it's a classic fight and picks pop and popcorn fight. But overall, we both have Alan Joban in this one. Really looking forward to this. We have a great card coming up. Two flyweight title fights in the main and co-main. So keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks, Matt, as we always say. Let's get into it.